So I'm here with Eric Hutchinson. Now he is one of the co-owners of this great product that we were talking about with the Scrambler. We really were focused on that, but we just couldn't help because here it is outside of the vehicle and it look, looks amazingly simple. Yeah, the idea is you have a really neat EV system and you don't want it to look like a Radio Shack bunch of wires in a car. Mm -hmm. So we packaged everything up to look kind of like a, you know, a V8 motor of sorts that fits in an LS footprint mm -hmm. where the gas guys understand it. And we took all the electronics, the BMS, the VCU, the PDUs, and we wired everything in behind the panel so you don't see it. The plumbing, the high voltage wires. Yeah, see, it so looks, it's all the core and the heart of the system and including about 26 kilowatts of batteries in this. So this whole assembly here with the motor on it weighs about 800 pounds or so, plus or minus. It's yeah. the same amount of weight in the front of the Jeep. So you're not re-engineering the placement of the weight when you swap the motor system. Yeah, and we, we did talk about that a little bit with Carter. Yeah. And so that was kind of neat when we were talking about weight biases. What do I do if I have to change my head gasket? Or how do I access this? Yeah, this is a toaster. Is a toaster, okay. <laughs> so, I mean, the inverter, so, some, in some cases, like in Carter's car, the high voltage junction box doesn't fit in the front based on the way he makes up with his transmission. So it can be relocated to the back. Everything on here is pretty modular. We so I, I love how you did that because I was trying to throw you with the head gasket thing and you just segued right into it. Well, so that, it sounds like um, as far as, is there a lot of maintenance with it or very little maintenance? Is there stuff that we have to access? What's, what's to maintenance? Well, I don't have to, do I have to change fluids? Do I have, have to, to change the oil every 30,000 miles, but good luck finding the oil. Okay. Yeah, well, I don't be know. Your transmission. That. Yeah. Zero maintenance. Charge it, run it, and beat tires. Charge it, run it, and beat your tires. So what's... So it used to be like with military vehicles, we had like hours, like this vehicle, this particular component would last 80,000 hours or something. Is it similar with this? Is no, it like I see where you're going. So this is, these are, these are VGA, the VDA format uh, lithium batteries must technically advance what Mercedes and VW are using. Mm -hmm. 2,500 to 3,000 charge cycles for the batteries. So let's just say you get 100 miles range times 3,000. That's what you're roughly looking at. Okay. So you just charge it, it does no memory. You can charge them forever you want. Okay. There's basically plug it and drive it. So say I, I bribe Eric today to go home with this to put in my, my Jeep at home. It's a good idea. Um, I, I agree. Uh, I could think this is gonna last me a decade and I'm gonna drop it in and I was, get power. Yeah. And that's like a be Tesla, you know, 500,000 miles. The idea is it should last you a long time. You know, your brakes are gonna last longer. You're not gonna be putting gas in it. You're not gonna be doing maintenance, literally a lot of tires. Yeah. And your runtime is gonna be related to how much battery you put in how big your pack size is and how you drive, how you use it. Now, does it come with a little megaphone where I can press like, engine sound, so it still has that cool V8 sound. You know, I know there's I... people doing it, you can mm -hmm. get a noise, yeah. but once you drive around in a quiet car and you're rock climbing and you yeah. hear your tires slipping because the rock's a little for bit sure, loose, for but sure. you never heard that noise because the engine noise like hid that noise. Yeah. You hear noises with your car creaking that you never would have heard when it was gas. That you don't want to hear either. And then, but, well, yeah. it's, it's possible, yeah. but you become aware of the other people's cars that are making a lot of noise. You look at them and you're like, that's shameful. I'm having a nice mm -hmm. quiet moment in my car and you have to pull up with that loud exhaust noisy car and then well, push the have, fumes in it. I have to say, Eric, that I love the sound of a throaty 401, mm -hmm. just wide open, but I think for the environmental and the advantages, the simplicity of this, the fact that we can put this in old vehicles and have them be like street legal and all that stuff, I would give up that throaty sound. Well, do you remember that Bose commercial where the guy sits in front of the speaker and just getting blasted across the yes, room? Yes, of course. Thank God we can still do that whenever you want. Yep. But the power that you can get in a small compact electric motor is so intense, it just changes the experience. You're 100% torque at zero RPMs. So at 4,000, you're already at max and you're out of your torque zone, which just blows you away. When you have a transmission, you go through that, you're shifting at 3,000 RPMs. You don't even start in first gear to normal training. So Eric, let's talk about the backside because that's equal is important because this is all neat and it looks like the dimension's gonna fit in a standard engine compartment, especially in these old Jeeps and things. But it looks, is this a standard bell housing where the starter goes? Does this spline assembly 
40 spline or whatever this is. Yeah, we have um, a couple different. We have a spline adapter, a motor shaft. We also have um, a keyed ones, depending. But what we do is we make up a motor to flywheel adapter. Okay. And we put on a very lightweight aluminum flywheel. And then we'll do like a racing clutch assembly like that McLeod does. Okay. And we can do something fairly standard and use it. It doesn't have to be you know, specific. But the idea is that we can make any bell housing to pretty much any transmission you want. Because this, this is all machine billet. Yeah, so we, like we can make these motors fit pretty much any transmission, but you want something that's rated like the 4050, over 600 foot-pounds of torque. The motor with 410 foot-pounds of torque will destroy things if you don't have the proper torque involved. So if, to, to put it out without trying to get torque numbers, if I think about just the components we used to use, like a turbo 465, a turbo 400, yeah. um, 4L60, 4L80, is, are these good choices for this? Well, um, if they can if they can put up with that kind of, you know, the pressure and the torque and the gear ratios. The right ones can. Yeah, you know, like first gear you won't use. I mean, if you ideally reuse it, and the thing about a manual transmission with an electric motor is you can get into much higher speeds. You almost don't need four-wheel low on your four-by anymore. Oh, I see. You can use four high because you can float between the gas pedal and the brake, and you can't stall an electric motor. Okay, yeah, and I, so yeah, you, I didn't really think about that. And that's why you're using four-wheel low is because, you know, a little slip or you can float the clutch a little bit and it's not a big deal, but you don't have to do that. You're, you're breaking gas pedal. And if you have a direct drive, same thing, no clutch. But mm. with the clutch, it's more of a driving mode. It, it could be second's pretty aggressive, but for example, in the Jeep here, third would be like low, fourth would be high. And if you okay. really hit into fifth, do you want to go 120 miles an hour in that Jeep, 125? It'll go that fast. All right. It's nuts. Well, now, now, Eric, I know you don't know me, but um, anytime I talk about an engine conversion or drivetrain, I got to know, does it run upside down? The batteries definitely have an orientation, but for a certain period of time, it probably would. So the I motor wells, the this, batteries. I get myself back over? Yeah, the batteries okay. definitely have an orientation for standard use, mm -hmm. but if you went rolling down a mountain and took the shortcut sideways, yes. they're going to survive the roll. Okay. No problem. As long as you have them built in properly, skid plates around your for battery sure. enclosures. Yeah, that, that's a given. At I'm least, just curious that if it's upside down, does it change any way that the. No, that the operates? structure of the VDA modules, it has kind of a rolled format to them, so they like to be installed either sideways or flat. Uh, for long-term operation, you wouldn't operate them upside down, but technically, for sure, for rolling sure. them over doing that. One other thing is, this is modular. If your inverter doesn't fit under your hood, you can flat panel this and move the inverter somewhere else in the car. Mm. You can add your accessories. This is the same battery enclosure that's in the middle of this. It holds 12 of the VDA modules, but we have a nine module like in the fuel tank of the Jeep, six module saddle, you know, bags yeah. go up so you can change your range and fluctuate between 53 kilowatt hours and, and 100. Yeah. So depending on your use and what you're going to apply, do you want to go, you know, three or four hours of, of rock climbing or driving, mm -hmm. or do you just want to do kind of a local shorter lap, more technical, lighter weight? All right, I want to do everything. Well, you can have three <laughs> different builds and I'll supply you with everything you need for all of the builds. Well, Eric, uh, thank you. Yeah. Um, I'm really uh, excited about your product. I can't wait and to see some of your builds. Well, hopefully we have some symbiosis here in the future where, like, I would like to see this and see where it goes. and. Yeah, it's going to be neat. Yeah, thank you for thank coming you, by. It's great to meet yes, you, and sir. I look forward to seeing it. All right. Bye-bye.